So it wasn't too long ago that I crowned the iPhone 15 Pro Max as my all-time favorite iPhone because of the changes that it got year over year, like USB-C, the titanium bill, the action button, and then some. And also as somebody who uses their iPhone as their main camera, getting those kind of use cases really helped me from an efficiency standpoint in my workflow, making the iPhone 15 Pro Max my absolute favorite iPhone of all time. But in this video, I wanna compare the 15 Pro Max to the 16 Pro Max, see if it's worth upgrading and talk about all the differences because even though they look relatively the same, there are a decent amount of differences that you should take a look at. So without further ado, let's compare these two phones and get right into it. So if you're just looking for the TLDR on whether or not you should go from the 15 Pro Max to the 16 Pro Max, for 99% of people, I'm gonna go ahead and say don't upgrade, there's no need to do that because the 15 Pro Max has pretty much everything the 16 Pro Max has, aside from a few things that we're gonna talk about in this video, and it's also AI ready to go, AI capable, as opposed to the 15 and the 15 Plus, which are not. So for the most part, and for most people, I'm gonna go ahead and say don't upgrade, especially because as somebody who did go from the 15 Pro Max to the 16 Pro Max, once I got everything installed and it looked familiar from the actual home screen and lock screen with all my applications, I've never had a more kind of identical experience going from an old phone to a new phone and that should really tell you a lot about that situation. But even though that is the case, there are some big differences that Apple gave us that doesn't really happen year over year, like even a larger screen size, which we haven't gotten in a new iPhone in a very long time. So let's actually go in deep and figure out exactly what the differences are between the 15 Pro Max, the 16 Pro Max, and see what those real world differences and use cases really are. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Unique, who's helping us kind of get ready with all our new iPhone cases. Today's video is sponsored by Unique, a brand that brings style, protection, and functionality to your brand new iPhone 16s. So first we have the Leiden case. This one's all about elegance and sophistication with its sleek vegan leather finish that not only looks premium but feels incredible in the hand. It also has a unique cutout for the camera control button that makes it easily accessible and it has built-in MagSafe compatibility making it perfect for anyone that uses MagSafe, especially if you want to get the new 25 watt charging. Next up is going to be the Heldro Max. If you're looking for a more rugged look and protection, this case is going to be your go-to. With reinforced corners and drop protections up to 15 feet, your iPhone is ready to handle any accidental drop or impacts. Plus, it also features a built-in kickstand via the camera bump, which I think is a very unique take, as well as a flex grip, which allows you to wield your 6.9 inch iPhone a lot easier, and finally, some additional magnets for that MagSafe compatibility. And now lastly, we have the Aleva case, which is a minimalist's dream. It's still very rigid and will protect your iPhone no matter which situation you're in, and it has a built-in kickstand that is ultra thin, but allows you to consume your content hands-free, whether it is in that landscape or portrait orientation. Unique's cases are a perfect blend of style, functionality, and they have options for any look or aesthetic. Be sure to check out Unique's cases down in the description below. It'll be the first link on there and make sure to protect your iPhone 16s with these new Unique cases. Again, big shout out to Unique for partnering with 9 to 5 mac And now back to our iPhone comparison video. So there are three big updates that the iPhone 16 Pro Max got over the 15 Pro Max, which I think shouldn't go overlooked because as I mentioned, if you just look at the two iPhones, especially from the rear and not from the side or anything like that, they look relatively identical. They're made out of the same titanium. They're for the most part, the same colors, unless you want to get the desert titanium color, which is kind of like this gold hueish one, which I did go into the store and I did like, but for the most part, they do look relatively identical. But when you start to hold them side by side, you do start to notice some of those differences. So first and foremost, this is the first time in about five or six years, I want to say that we've gotten a actual larger screen size on the 16 Pro and the 16 Pro Max. We went from 6.7 inches on the 15 Pro Max to 6.9 inches on that 16 Pro Max. And they did it in a way where it doesn't feel that much bigger in the hand, but you get the benefit of having a larger display. And the way that they did this is because they were able to kind of slim down the bezels that much more. And I will say the bezels on the 16 Pro Max are the smallest bezels that I've ever seen on any phone period and you do notice. And I do like how it still fits in the hand the same way that it fits in the hand of the 15 Pro Max. So all in all, you're getting an additional 0.2 inches while really only increasing the overall footprint by about one or 2%. So keep that in mind, you're getting 0.2 inches for an increase in size that's very minimal to the point where you don't even feel that increase in size. And in terms of weight, it's only six grams heavier and you do get a bigger battery in there, which we will touch on as one of the biggest changes to this iPhone. So with that 6.9 inch display, the actual display tech is exactly the same. The only difference is that this display is able to go down all the way to one nit of brightness versus the 15 Pro Max could not go that far down in terms of the actual brightness level. So if you're somebody that needs to have low brightness, then this phone will be able to do that for you. And that 6.9 inch display does allow for a little bit more content to be visible on the screen. So think a couple extra lines on a news article, maybe an extra piece inside of some sort of application. Just a little bit more that can fit on the screen itself. But you still have a world-class 460 PPI, that 2 million to 1 contrast ratio, 
true tone display, the wide color display. You still get that 2000 nit peak brightness when you're outdoors on both of the phones. So those are all things that the 15 Pro Max had. Again, the only difference is that it can go down to one nit and it is 6.9 inches versus 6.7. And then you also get a 6.3 inch display on the Pro versus a 6.1 inch display on the 15 Pro. So changing up the size of the screen is something that doesn't happen too often. And I always welcome a larger screen and we are sort of kind of getting into that phablet territory in my opinion. Oh. And now let's talk about reason number two, which is all things battery and charging related. So this is gonna be the fastest charging or fastest capable of charging iPhone that Apple's ever created. We do get 40 watts of wired charging on the 16 Pro Max, and then you also get 25 watts of MagSafe charging on the 16 Pro Max versus 15 watts and then 25 watts respectively for the older phones. Now for the MagSafe charging, you do need to get the Apple certified puck, which is a different puck than the ones that they had last year. And you do need to have a 30 watt charging brick in order to get that 25 watt fast charging via MagSafe. So again, there's a lot of caveats to go with this fast charging, but it is capable of that. And then also for the 40 watt charger, you need at least a 45 watt charging brick in order to be able to charge at 40 watts and that speed. But again, you can use third party ones for that kind of charging speed and you have noticed a difference. I was able to charge my phone from 2% up to I believe 53% in a little less than half an hour. And in less than 45 minutes, I was all the way up to about 78%. So being able to fast charge your iPhone that is already a bigger battery to give you more battery life at a faster pace, I think is always a welcome upgrade when it comes to upgrading any phone. And now of course, Apple doesn't like to give us milliamp hours on their website and things like that. But in terms of what they're giving us from a battery playback perspective, they're saying 33 hours of video playback on the new 16 Pro Max versus 29 hours of video playback on the 15 Pro Max, which is about a 14% increase in battery life if you're just looking at that one metric. And now there have been some teardowns and what we've seen in terms of milliamp hours on the 16 Pro Max, we have a 4,685 milliamp hour battery, which is the largest battery in any iPhone ever versus 4,422 milliamp hours on the 15 Pro Max. So battery life should be a lot better. And in my two weeks of using the iPhone, I am getting more than a day of battery life. I'm getting about eight to 10 hours of screen on time, depending on how I'm using my iPhone. And I do use my iPhone a lot to video record, which does drain a lot of battery as well. So always keep that in mind when comparing the actual phones and their battery lives. But for right now, I'm getting a little bit over a day. For instance, I took it on a day trip to New York, stayed the night, woke up and I had about 12% battery life the very next morning. And that's when I ended up plugging it in to charge it up. So battery life is a little bit better and it is a bigger battery. And now number three, in terms of what the differences are, Apple put a big focus on the whole content creation situation. And that's gonna include the camera control button and that's gonna include a bunch of other different hardware and software differences that are exclusive to the iPhone 16 Pro Max, which I think are very beneficial, again, for somebody like myself who uses their iPhone in that way. And if we weren't in a situation already where your iPhone could be a studio in your pocket, we definitely are there with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. The first thing I will mention is that we do have the A18 Pro chip on the 16 Pro Max versus the A17 Pro on the 15 Pro Max, but according to Apple's website, they're identical. They're both using the same three nanometer process. They both have a six core CPU with two performance and four efficiency cores. They both have a six core GPU and they both have a 16 core neural engine. So on paper, they're the same exact thing. I think Apple did mention a couple differences, but they're very, very small differences. They're relatively the same chip because we already know that the iPhone 15 Pro Max is set and ready to run Apple intelligence with eight gigs of RAM, so they didn't have to do too much to bring it over to the iPhone 16 Pro Max, and they just kind of rebranded it as the 18 Pro. So let's first talk about that camera control button, or again, Apple doesn't want us to call it a button, but it is a brand new button that was been added to the entire iPhone 16 lineup, which I thought was relatively interesting. I thought they would say that just for the Pro models, similar to how they did it with the action button last year, but all the iPhones now have an action button and they all now have a camera control button. And depending on when you're watching this, we should have a video going over camera control in depth with everything that you can do with it and how to use it, how to customize it, and what it means moving forward with photo intelligence, which should be coming out with something like 18.2. But for right now, it's literally just a shortcut button to open up your camera application. It can be changed in the settings to open up maybe another supported application. I think like Instagram supports it, Snapchat, Halide. There's some other third-party ones, but they're all camera-focused applications, and you cannot use it to use it as a shortcut to something else. That's why the action button is there. But I actually really like the camera control button. If anything, it's made me get rid of all the other shortcuts that I had to access my camera, like the lock screen shortcut to get to my camera and things like that, because it's so easy to now reach in your pocket, have some sort of tactile feedback and an actual button dedicated for the camera. So just from a physical standpoint, as somebody uses the camera application a very frequent amount of times per day, having that there is a net positive. 
But then you have all these other kind of use cases, like how it works in terms of like a soft tap, then a soft double tap, then pushing it all the way down. So real quick, it is a physical button that you depress all the way down, but there's also a second layer to it, which is more touch sensitive. So you do a soft single tap to bring up your main control, so whatever the zoom is or whatever control it's in right now, then you do a soft double tap to change what that control could be, right? You can change the aperture, the exposure, the zoom, the different types of cameras, the, the tone, the photo styles, all these things are options and categories that you can kind of scroll through. And then finally, if you depress it all the way down, it will snap a picture or will start a video recording depending on what you're using it for. And for me, I got used to it within a day or two. I actually really like how it's implemented. I like the use cases. I like how responsive it can be. And it's just like kind of, it's magical as Apple's able to create these buttons by using touch sensitivity, pressure sensitivity, and then also it being an actual button. It would have been amazing if they actually included touch ID in there, but again, a man can dream. But in terms of function, it's not doing anything different that you couldn't already do with your 15 Pro Max. It's just another way to access all those different camera controls. And you notice that Apple really wants you to use these because once you start interacting with that camera control button, the rest of the camera UI completely disappears because it wants you to use that camera control area to control all of your camera settings in the moment. So keep that in mind, but again, it's not doing anything more than the 15 Pro Max, it's just a different way to interact with your camera. But in terms of physical and actual software differences that came to the camera situation, there are four different upgrades that came to the cameras versus the 16 Pro Max. The first one, which is probably my favorite one, has to be that the ultra wide camera went from 12 megapixels to 48 megapixels, making it a much better transition when you go from that 0.5 to that 1x zoom on your camera. So being able to take 48 megapixel ultra wide camera shots is something that I'm gonna be using way more frequently because with the 15 Pro Max and older iPhones that did have that ultra wide, when you moved away from the main camera, that main 48 megapixel sensor, you immediately can tell the difference in the viewfinder, no matter how many tricks from with software Apple tried to pull, it was just a different shot that it wasn't as good. It was a little bit more noisy. It was something that you didn't really want to show off unless it was in completely perfect lighting. The second it got dark, the noise started to kind of creep in with that ultra wide. But now with the 48 megapixel shooter, it is a much crisper shot overall. Another new addition that came to the 16 Pro Max is a 4K 120 FPS. So the super slow-mo that can not only be taken and shot on the iPhone, but then can also be dialed down and edited down through the Photos application, which can still be done in the 15 Pro Max. That's an iOS 18 feature, not a 16 Pro Max feature but it is something that's very cool to be able to have 4K 120 FPS footage being recordable on your iPhone, which is something we didn't have before. And then a new addition that came to the 16 Pro Max is the ability to take spatial photos, which can then be viewed on your Vision Pro or save for later when the Vision Pro gets cheaper. But again, if you don't have a Vision Pro, then this isn't really a big deal, but you can take spatial video and spatial photos on your 16 Pro Max, which you cannot do on your 15 Pro Max. And then one of my absolute favorite features, or probably the best feature and the most underrated feature that the 16 Pro Max got were those studio quality mics. Now Apple says studio quality mics a lot in their kind of jargon when they're talking about hardware, like the laptops got it, the iPads got it. I believe at one point they said that the iPhones had it, but this is actually a very cool use case and it's amazing how good these microphones have gotten, especially if you don't even have anything with you. Like being able to just pull out your iPhone and use it as a studio quality mic on the go, running gun, or maybe in a hotel room is something that's relatively unheard of. And not only that, the microphones are amazing, but then also there's a software layer to this, which is audio mixing on the fly. So if you take a video of somebody or two people talking and it's kind of noisy around, you're able to then kind of hone in after the fact in post-production in the photos application directly and kind of minimize all that outside noise. So you have the normal setup, then you're able to kind of hone in on who's talking, you're able to hone in on the people that are talking behind you, and basically you can decide what your video is playing from an audio perspective with all these different audio tracks. So basically what's happening is with machine learning in the background, it's setting up all these different audio tracks of what it's listening to, maybe dedicating one to background noise, dedicating one to person one, person two, maybe dedicating one to person three behind the camera, and then being able to then operate that individually inside of the Photos application where you can decide what can be kind of enhanced, what can be taken away, and then be able to then export that and use that the way that you want it to. So I think the microphone situation with the 16 Pro Max is actually the best new feature that came to the iPhone 16 lineup. So those are all the differences that we got from the 15 Pro Max to the 16 Pro Max. As I mentioned, I don't really think that most people that have a 15 Pro Max need to upgrade to the 16 Pro Max because even though there are some great and new hardware and software features to the 16 Pro Max, most people are just gonna grab the 16 Pro Max and then feel like it's an identical phone. The same feeling that I got when I first got it installed and got everything set up with my 16 Pro Max. But now who should get the 16 Pro Max? Like if somebody is coming from a 14, a 13, a 12, like where is that cutoff line? 
basically a quick little buyer's guide is think about it like this think about what you want in terms of what you want your iphone to do one of the biggest things for me is that usb c port and being able to offload footage and data and fast charge and have one single cable for all my devices so usb c is very important to me so if you're on a 14 pro max and you do want to get that USB C port, then by all means go for it because I do think it'll be worth it and it'll future proof you. And there's enough of a difference in terms of all the other features like the camera control, the different feel, the titanium build, the lightweight nature of it. It'll feel like a new phone. And same thing goes down the line. But I think if you're in that iPhone 11, 12 territory, then I think it'd be worth it. I think you still have another year with the 13 Pro Max at least. And I mean, honestly, if you just want to milk it as long as possible, these iPhones will last you six to seven years. But if you're in the iPhone 11, 12, maybe even the 13 situation, upgrading, you definitely feel a night and day difference of what you're getting out of it, especially if you're coming from the iPhone 11 lineup. But that's just my two cents in terms of the buying guide. But in a silo, the iPhone 16 Pro Max is a fantastic phone that checks off every single box from a quality standpoint, use case, efficiency, hardware, software, and everything's been working very well. It's just unfortunate that Apple's touting this iPhone as the Apple Intelligence iPhone, and it's still not ready yet, even though they're selling these iPhone 16s. But that's to each their own. But that will do it for this video, everybody. Let me know what you thought with a comment down below. Did you upgrade to the 16 Pro Max? If you did, where did you come from? Did you upgrade from the 15 Pro Max to the 16 Pro Max? Always curious to know what people are doing from a buying perspective and why they think they would need the 16 Pro Max over the 15. So let's discuss all that in the comments down below. And if you made it to the end or this point of the video, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check one of these videos out. YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right here, and I think you're going to like this video down here. Big shout out to Unique for sponsoring this video and partnering up with 9 to 5 mac They have some awesome cases that can also help out from a function standpoint and match up well with your iPhone 16s. But that'll do it, everybody. Until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace.